hope. <laughs> but at least for yourself, perhaps more can happen. All right, so does anyone want to get up and introduce their two sides? Anyone have two sides that want to speak, or one side that's like aching to get out? Okay, stand up. My left one was the dancer. Left one? Left hand, left. And oh, my right. right side was the learner. The dancer and the learner. Okay. And, and is there something between the dancer and the learner, like are they really showing up in your life right now in some way? Yes. <laughs> I just okay. love dancing, and when they talked to each other, the loud one started making student dance. Got it. Do you want to show us a little bit? Like what? <laughs> one of these days, I'll actually get someone to actually do that, but so far, no one has. <laughs> I'm a dancer, too, so it's like, come on. Um, okay, anyone else has a, have a side that just has to speak right now or show its stuff? Yeah, I noticed you were doing yeah, something. My left shoulder. Yeah. Um, versus the right side of my body. Although the first time we did a body scan, the right side felt really happy and it felt like I'm overextending a lot on this side, like I'm putting a lot of weight on the right side of my body. Mm -hmm. And the left felt weaker. But this, the second one that we did, mm -hmm. the left side spoke much louder. It was louder. It was louder. So the weaker side actually spoke louder. So as we go into the next step around action, just kind of notice then what might be needed there in order to get a little attention. Yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, my right side is very loud right now, and my left side is very quiet. Mm -hmm. And as we did this, my right side became even more and more comfortable. And I found myself wanting to put my hands together, and that quieted drew my right side down when I brought my body more together. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then what happens when you get quieter? What happens in that? Um, well, it just, I felt a little more integrated, a little more calm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very interesting because I got very confused. The communication between the two uh -huh. didn't want to happen. The left side, I couldn't relate to loud and quiet. I, the left side felt soft. Mm -hmm. Uh, as opposed to quiet and comfortable as opposed to quiet. Soft and comfortable. Right. And uh, there was a lot of confusion and resistance to having them use separate. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So the confusion and the integration, wanting the, the integration can happen, are all parts of things that can show up, of course, right? Well, you know, why do I have these two parts? You know, and why and they're so distinct, you know, and that I want to integrate that this is way too uncomfortable. So remember those edges that we were talking about, working at the edge? So it's up to our clients to decide when enough is enough. So we need them aware enough in order for them to go, okay, I need to now integrate. It was too much, right? And so that's why I need to make sure, um, as a practitioner of this work, that my clients are truly paying attention, that they're not off doing the grocery list, which means getting to that edge, the one where you go, oh, okay, that's too much. And so when people get to that edge, it's kind of an interesting one. Is that one you need to pull out of? You know, is that something you need to do differently, or do you want to work there? That's always my question. Is that an edge to work at? Or is it one to pull out of? Okay, and for us that means physically because we're actually working hands on. Do I pull out of an edge or do I just hold it? Right, and it's up to my clients to tell me. All right. So, for example, I was working with a client on, of mine who, when he first started working uh, with me, had been sober for 14 months, and um, and he did relapse. So he was back working with me, it had been several months, and he was back working with me. And he came in, and all he could feel was tense. And this is his word, tense. He didn't call it tension, he called it tense. I'm tense, I'm tense. 
He said, I don't want to feel anything. Tense. That's, he was feeling a lot. He was feeling enough, right? So I put him in a posture where he was sitting with his legs out in front of him. Remember, we're on mat, so he's sitting down here. I put a chair, and he said, right here, this is where I feel tense. Oops, sorry. This is where I feel tense, right there, right? And um, so I place him in this posture where he's leaning forward over his straight legs. The chair I put in right up to the point where it touched that point of tension. And he's got his hands around the back of the chair, so he's working this way, right? And he's got his hands around the back of the chair, and he's really working it. Okay, He's, he like is fidgeting, he doesn't, you know, it's obvious this is not comfortable. And we hang there. What's happening now? Tense. I don't want to feel anything else. Tell me more. You don't want to feel anything else, right? Tense. Okay, so we sat there for like 10 minutes he was in this posture, maybe even longer. And his hands are white. Right? And he's just, and his eyes are closed, but he's just going through all sorts of stuff. I remind him, remember, you're the one who decides how long you're going to stay here. Right? And he's there, and he finally lets go, and he lays down flat on his back, his arms open. Mm. I take the chair out of the way, and I place the hand right here, where that tense part was. And I said, what's happening now? Rogerian dialogue, what's happening now? Tell me more. That's pretty much it. <coughs> what's happening now? Nothing. Say more about nothing. He yeah, doesn't say anything. And we sit there again for about 10 minutes. And I see his whole body and his breath start to come down. And he finally says, must have been again another 10, 15 minutes. He finally says, I'm relaxed. Like he didn't know what that was. I'm relaxed. Okay. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is take you into the next part, into integration, and I'll tell you what happened with him during integration, but I want you to have your own experience first because it is your experience that's most important for you. Okay. So <clears throat> what I'd like you to do, again, put everything away. You're going to do integration. <clears throat> sitting. And this is an opportunity to get into step three, action. Okay? Action. All right. So bring your body to a place of attention. Close your eyes or soften your gaze, whichever feels most appropriate in this moment. Deep, deep breath into the nose, open the mouth. Oh, these deeper breaths are really good for just transitioning. So let yourself transition from the talking part into the noticing part, the experience. Now notice where these parts of you are right now and begin to go back through the session. Go back to the very beginning, in fact, when you first walked in, sat down, beginner's mind, you didn't know where you were going. You got that intention, so go ahead and pull that intention out of your metaphorical back pocket and just kind of take a look to see how the intention played out. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't. And then begin to move forward through all the little and big aha moments all the things that showed up for you. <coughs> and when you look at everything that happened today, this morning, what is it that's standing out? What feels really significant, really important about what showed up this morning? What feels really important for you? And shine it up a bit. Tell yourself more about it. Now consider your life, your life outside of here. 
I'm going to bet that what showed up here today is somehow also showing up in your life. Maybe it's something that's there, maybe it's missing in some way. But notice the connection. What showed up here and how it's showing up in your life, whether it's work with a client, family, relationships with yourself. Now that you have the awareness, that gem of awareness that showed up, and how it's showing up in your life, consider this next day in front of you, just today. What might you do to help support what you just found? What might you do, like just a baby step? <coughs> just a baby step. Make it kind of specific. It might simply be, oh, I need to be with this, right? But when are you going to be with it? Where are you going to be? Who's going to be around you? So get a little specific. And imagine yourself actually doing that. Imagine yourself actually taking your own advice. What's that like? Taking your own advice. Who are you? When you do that. And then acknowledge yourself for showing up all your experiences just the way they are. All the perfection and the imperfections. Take another breath in. Come back into the room. That is always the final step to a Phoenix Rising session, whether private or in group. How do we take everything we just learned and bring it out into the world, right? Because the work is all great and wonderful when you're sitting in your office or when they're sitting on my mat. But how do you actually get them to connect that work in with their life? And in that Rogerian way, how do you let them find the action that is appropriate? Right? rather than me giving an action. And oftentimes, and I'll tell you the end of the story of the, the, um, my client who found relaxed, oftentimes I think, well, that's certainly not the action that I would have given you if, I, if that was my goal. I always think, oh, I know what they're going to do. And then, of course, they never do that. And what they find is so much more perfect for them. Duh. So, my client sits up for um, integration, and he says, I do not want to feel my feelings, and he says, <clears throat> um, <laughs> Susan just flashed me a card, so now I'm like, I have no idea what he says. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so he's integrating. And he said, you know, the biggest fear that I had, the biggest fear in the past, in the 14 months that I stayed sober, was that I was going to relapse. And I did everything that I could to make sure that I was not going to do that. And, and, of course, the harder and harder he tried, of course, he relapsed. And he said, but I relapsed. And here I am. It's like... It wasn't that big of a deal. It wasn't as big of a deal as I was making it out to be. And he said, so for some reason, he said, I didn't want to feel what I was feeling. All I could feel was tense. He said, but I don't know why. You know, I found relaxed. Like, how bad is that? So when he actually went into the fear and held that point of tense, right? And um, he was able to walk through it for himself. And I hopefully just created the container for him to actually do that. I had no idea what he was going to find. I just sat there with him, right? And um, 
So his action, and this was one I, 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 I thought, wow, I would not have picked this, but it was really great. And I said, so what are you going to do today? He said, I'm going to have fun. I was like, really? <laughs> oh. I said, what will that look like? And he said, I don't know. And we sat with the I don't know. And he said, oh, I know. They didn't want to tell me, which was fine. I didn't need to know. Right? So, so integration is the place where you get to come back up. At least um, for us, we have the centering and intention. We have all the body and dialogue stuff that happens in the middle. That whole body scan, the negotiating, the working with the postures and all. Um, yes, there is hands-on uh, work that I do as a yoga therapist, different than being a therapist in that way. <coughs> and, um, and then the integration at the end is the full process, just as you went through yourself. You obviously can do it hands-off. And um, so that is the process. So what I want to put out to you is a little bit of homework, OK? Um, I know you guys probably move from one client to the next client to the next client. You have very few minutes in between. So I have a three-minute stretch that you can set up. It's a video that will automatically pop up a new video, OK, that will stretch your body and stretch your mind in the same way that we've been working here, OK? So feel free to download, download that. Okay, going to my website. And the website, careforTherapist.com. I most often work with therapists, both as clients and, of course, hopefully you guys refer to me, but I have therapists who come and learn this stuff. Um, so I have trainings and all of that. I also have podcasts that you can download. So actually, if you go to Care for a Therapist and go to the self-care center, okay, the podcasts of Centering Body Scan and Integration, are there, and I'll let you know they're a little bit longer because what we had to do here, I had to give you just a taste of the work, so they're a little longer. All right, so careforTherapist.com, and let me say what's next. So if you're curious about how to work some, with someone hands-on, right? Like I said, I have a lot of therapists who are really doing this work, and they they are able to do this. Um, here in California, and I can tell you how. But I have a professional training in San Diego. I only teach one level one training and one level two training in San Diego each year. Um, so the level one is a four day and the level two is six days. You can get CEs for that. Um, and not, anyways, you can get them. Um, so would love to have you. I've already got a few therapists actually signed up for the one in November for the level one. By the end of level two, you'll, yeah. Um, level one is $5.95 for the four day. Level two is $7.95 for six day. Okay. And those um, prices have not changed in like eight years. Silly, but, you know, we're trying. Okay. Um, and nice to do in San Diego. They're all, we're all over the country. We're actually all over the world. We have practitioners all over the world. Um, <clears throat> but it's nice when it's here so you don't have to travel, okay? Uh, and if you want to get a taste of what it's like to go hands-on, I have my next workshop on July 13th. It's a Saturday from 9 to 11. And if you sign up for today and give me 10 bucks, you're in. Um, otherwise, it's $20 before the workshop or $30 at the door. But that's going to give, we're going to do a lot of this stuff, but it's a much more intimate set, setting, and you actually get to see what it's like to go hands-on and bring dialogue in with that. Okay? So I hope you'll, you'll come to that. Um, let's see. Professor. Oh, private session. So I've mentioned I work privately. I am new here. Building a new private practice after being in Seattle for 10 years is a little daunting. So um, I would love for you to come work with me. I do give, um, for therapists, I give $50 off of two sessions. That would be $200 for two sessions. My sessions are 80 minutes long, so they're much longer, okay? And um, my practice is in Sorrento Valley. So I'm pretty central, both for East, North, and San Diego. Um, and it's a great big space. And questions. questions. Oh yeah, that thing. What else? 
I know we've sort of been talking kind of through it, but anything? Yeah. You know, there are different words depending on who you're talking with. So whereas I may be speaking about sweaty, I am the idea of self-study um, and Santosha and, and all those things that work in the eight limbs of yoga. Um, here, it's going to be different language. But essentially, I mean, you're going to know you're a yoga, you know, doing the yoga as well. You, you're doing all this work. Right. What we get to add on here is the Carl Rogers work, right? Is that Rogerian dialogue. So I actually work with yoga teacher trainings in order to say, okay, how do you work with emotions that come up when you're teaching a yoga class? Not just for the student, but for yourself, you know? Like someone auto, auto has this big response. How do you offer a space for them to have the introspect introspection without stepping in? Thank you. So I'm glad you're out there doing that. <laughs> Do you want to draw a card before taking more questions? Because I know some people might have to leave. Oh, you get one? <gasps> well, get in it. Did anyone not put a card in? <laughs> Wait, that's fine. <laughs> I know, you're on it. <laughs> no, it's your name. Okay. So Susan, I'm going to let you draw. So this is for a private session, OK? It's for a private session. I'll let Susan draw, because otherwise I'll just go for the pretty ones or something. <laughs> A little piece of paper and stuff. I want you to do that. So, Lori Hayes. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yay, Lori. Good. I'll talk with you afterwards and stuff. Your phone okay. number's on. Okay. Did you see this? Okay. Got it. Yay, Lori. Um, and I'll, I will send out um, the, the slides, and um, I'll tell you what, I'll extend that $10, because you may not have money here, okay? But I'll, send, I'll extend the $10 out to the end of this week for the um, workshop that's happening, okay? Um, let's see. We have about five more minutes for questions. Okay, Any, anyone else? Anything else? Yeah? Is the hands-on workshop at the turn of the Yes. Yeah, all my workshops in privates and all I use that space. It's really good space. Yeah. Where are you now? I mean, you're in San Diego? Yeah, I'm in Sorrento Valley. Sorrento. Yeah, is my session space. So it's really easy. It's like right off of the 5805, you know, that mess that they have going on right now. Yeah, so welcome to San Diego. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. I want to give you a little something to thank you. <laughs> a potted plant, which will continue to grow, as opposed to, unless you're a potted plant in my house, and then kind of cut like flowers that. last longer. I am the hospice for potted plants, six months or less, for your lifespan. But again, I want to thank Soleil. So if everyone would give her a warm round of applause. And your certificates are out where you signed in. I passed out the evaluations for you to complete. So there's just a pile for you to put the completed evaluations. Also, in between all the certificates are also her business cards, the flyer for her upcoming workshops, and her postcards. So feel free to take those on your way out. Next month's seminar is going to be on July 24th. Now there are five Wednesdays, but we are always the fourth Wednesday. So it is going to be July 24th, and we have a speaker coming down from Center for Discovery up in Los Angeles to talk about motivating clients into mental health treatment. He specializes with adolescents and transitional age youth, but he'll also be talking about adults. So he's going to be coming down in July. Our August presenter is coming from the Couples Institute, and they're talking about couples therapy. 
and our September presenter is on interventions. So um, we have October as well, but I want to get the topic all squared away before I make any promises to you. So we will see you next month in this space. Yeah. How can we be happy in the new DSM? We're not going to hold any seminars on the DSM-5 this year because um, right now it's not being rolled out by insurance companies. It's not going to get rolled out to the VA until October, November. So until it gets rolled out with managed care, it's not actually being applied to most practices, but we will probably do a DSM-5 uh, workshop either January or February next year, because we're dark in November, December. And it'll give everyone a chance to figure out how the different electronic health records are dealing with um, DSM-5. We'll have an idea as to which insurance companies are working with DSM-5, and we can go over the changes step by step. So that will be either someone that I bring in from UCS who's been working on it, or myself or someone from the staff who is now, well, who are now all very familiar with DSM-5 internally. So we will have a training, it just won't be until uh, 2014. Any other questions? All right, well thank you very much and we'll see you next month. Okay, when I get back in town. Take care. Take care, it was nice meeting you. Oh, <laughs> you won!